my name's Dale, and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today is show off day to show you my new shop. There was, this is the last one in a series of three, uh, my new old shop. The first episode showed you what my shop has looked like for the last eight months, which is basically storage in a double car garage. The second one is showing you the empty space before it got cleaned up, and now I get to show it to you with all the toys set in place. But come on in, let's take a look. Over here you get to see the welders. Um, one is missing, two are missing. Actually, yeah, I have a lot of welders. They're old welders. They're just kind of fun, funky things I've bought. I also consider plasma cutters as welders, so you know, don't beat up on me on that. Um, some of these are just really old machines, like this uh, Hobart here, um, this Palcon, which is actually a fantastic machine. Over here is kind of a fun little machine. Notcher for sheet metal. Really been looking forward to one of these. Found it on Craigslist the other day. And of course, when you're on Craigslist, you ask them, do they have anything else for sale? And of course, I got another air compressor, which I have an addiction to air compressors and metal lathes and welders. Anything that's a tool, I think I'll buy it. Over here is really material processing. I've got a bandsaw. Uh, set up. This is a. I got to remember. Hold on. It's a Kalamazoo. Great name, isn't it? Still, actually, there is, as I recall, they're still in business. Over here on the side is a cold saw automated. It will, um, of course, lock the material in place with the hydraulic vise. And then it has pneumatic over hydraulic to drive the blade down on the material. So this area here is really set up for a, um, metal work or uh, for welding, that kind of stuff. Over here, we'll just call this my wall of shame. These are unfinished projects. Still kind of use them a little bit. <laughs> this, um, this press here, I built it on a whim for one project. I love this thing. It is a great machine. It's got a very long out now. It's about 12 inches. So I can drive quite a bit of stuff. It's only 1,200 pounds, but I'm finding out that 1,200 pounds will press just about anything that I need into position, but it will not bend a lot of thick material. So I'll end up making a better one. 14 inch bandsaw. Um, this one here was just great. It came with the Kalamazoo. Great, great kind of fun guys I got to meet there. I got to say one of the benefits to Craigslist is not just buying tools at a great price. It is meeting great people. The guy that sold me these saws, fantastic guy. He's been in racing his whole life, uh, dirt track racing. He's actually in the Hall of Fame in dirt track racing. I wish I could remember his name. Sorry about that. Fun, fun person. Here is the homemade bead roller, some big gnarly uh, forming dies. I'll have to show you what those make. Of course, the table saw. You've seen the surface grinder. Uh, it'll end up going here back in the grinding room. Some things have to be modified to the stand. Right now, well, you can see it's a little wide to reach through the door, but good news is I was planning to cut it down even before I moved in here. I think these appendages, I don't know what you want to call them, these growths, come out. I've never liked them. I'm going to cut those down anyway, and then it'll fit in the door. The other thing when I do that is I'll be able to take the cavity underneath, put some shelves, and store stuff underneath. I don't like empty spaces under machines unless they're being used for something, especially in small shops, which I've always been in a small shop until this one. This one's 1,500 square feet. The one I had in California was 300 square feet. So every square inch has to be used. So that cabinet is going to end up getting modified, and then all the grinding fixtures will go in underneath there. So let's go back to the grinding room. In here, it's going to be a little more echoey. So the grinder, the surface grinder, will end up going in this corner. Um, great little jet uh, belt grinder with um, grinding wheel, buffer, 
grind, you know, different things, different grinders. I'll also have a 18 inch disc sander coming in here and also a 12 inch disc sander with a six inch belt sander with it. I know it's a lot of stuff. The 18 inch band saw, or the 18 inch sand, disc sander is designed for one specific project. And I'll show that to you in a little bit. Down here is stuff for the surface grinder. But hopefully that stuff will be getting put inside the surface grinding cabinet when that gets finished up. Oh, here's a fun one. So I volunteer for Habitat for Humanities. And they're putting in a new store here in Roswell. Actually, it's in between Roswell and Alpharetta. And they asked me if I could build them a miniature golf course. So I said, sure, I've always wanted to build a miniature golf course. So here's one of the holes to it. You can see that I used uh, stuff with it that is designed, you know, stuff that would come from Habitat. So let's see how it works. Just drop a ball in the hole. So now, of course, this still has to be painted and the grass has to be laid, all that kind of stuff. But it's just kind of fun. I built three of them for them. Let me show you a couple pictures of those. Kind of fun. So over here is going to be the machine shop. This is more for this finer, more detailed stuff. Behind you, of course, is welding, the coarse, bigger stuff that I'm looking forward to doing more of since I actually have space for it. I've always liked to have everything next to the machine that it belongs to. So here, with the closing, this is cabinet is set up, and it's going to be all stuff for the closing. Now, I know there's a, well, let's take a look at this. There's the Cincinnati dividing head. <laughs> it's too big to move. It's staying there. Um, so I'm going to have to cheat sometimes. Honestly, it'll probably never get used because it's too big for my milling machine. But who knows? I might get a big Cincinnati milling machine someday. But in here, I have all the live centers, drill chucks. Um, here's some live centers for you. How's that for a bull nose? There's even a bigger one back there. You know, chucks will be in here, other things like that. So here's the closing. Great machine. Just finished cleaning it up. I guess this video is also kind of a shop tour. But I'm going to do a full shop tour someday and just walk you through each machine because each machine in here has something unique and special about it that I think is well worth sharing and teaching you guys about. Over here is the Enco. This has kind of been my main machine for, boy, four years now. Uh, so eventually, well, we're going to see what happens to this one. What I like about this, you know how I talked about the surface grinder and how underneath that cavity has to be filled up with something useful, you know, storing the tools. This Enco lathe is great because it's basically a bench top lathe that I built an overkill stand for. And in it, the drawers, is everything for metal lathe work. Just like the cabinet next to the closing, these drawers really service this, and they kind of cross over a little bit, but it's all, about, uh, it's all about the metal lathe. Over here is the Enco milling machine. Great machine, really enjoyed it. Here's the cabinet for it. The drawers in here will supply everything I need to be working with that machine so I'm not running all over the shop. Down here are different fixtures for it and really enjoying the chance to get to use some of those new fixtures. Like I said, since I've been in Atlanta, I've been doing a lot of shopping on Craigslist. Yeah, a lot of stuff. So here is my pride and joy, the Hardinge. Can't wait to get my dream machine up and running. But right now, well, let's just say it's a nightmare condition. It's probably about a year and a half away before I even get a chance to use it. 
Back here is the storage. Doesn't look too bad for storage right now, does it? Could be a lot worse and probably will be. Remember when I showed you the bead roller and I showed you that rolling dies on it? This is what that die does. It's, I'm working on making these picture frames. Some of you know I was a photographer before I got into doing the metalworking world. Uh, I traveled all over. One of the series I worked on was photographing old cars rusting away in the desert. And a great steel frame like that I think will be the accent on these prints. Um, this is of course just a corner. The final frames will be around four foot square. Quite large. A um, lot of work into getting just that corner put together. But I'll, I'll cover that in another time. Oh, and the reason for the 18 inch disc sander is I need to be able to get this 45 degree perfect for when it gets TIG, TIG welded together. Right here is um, where a lot of my tooling hangs out, and I shouldn't say tooling, a lot of tools. So you've got wrenches, that kind of stuff. All these drawers are full of different things. This one here, you know, just measuring stuff. Just kind of piled in there for now. It'll start looking better later on. Of course, drill press, 14 inch bandsaw. This one here is great. If you come around to the side here, you see that it has an extra set of pulleys right here. There's a transmission, and this is set up for metal cutting and also woodworking. So I hope you've kind of enjoyed this uh, little tour of the new shop. A lot going on here. Can't wait to actually get in here and, well, get the machines wired up and working. Oh, I forgot. I'm also on Facebook now. I'll put a little link here so you can find me on Facebook and see what I'm up to. I try to give you something at least on a daily basis. So until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. <laughs>